Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending this talk. Today, I'm just going to update you on progress on revising the existing 3D geologic model of the bedrock of southern Ontario and our progress on development of a hydrostratigraphic model. I'd just like to acknowledge at the beginning that funding for this project is provided by the Nuclear Waste Management Organization, the Geological Survey of Canada, the Oil, Gas, and Salt Resources Library, and MITAX, a federal research funding organization in Canada. So to a summary, we've revised and enhanced a previously published 3D bedrock geological model of Southern Ontario. There's new features in that model, including salt mines, salt caverns, oil and gas reservoirs, etc. And I'll give you some information on our progress on development of a 3D hydrostratigraphic model. Project scope includes all the Paleozoic bedrock of Southern Ontario. There's 55 layers in the model representing approximately 70 Paleozoic bedrock formations plus the Precambrian plus the surficial sediments. It's about 1,500 meters of shallowly dipping Paleozoic bedrock, 110,000 square kilometers at 400 meter resolution using LeapFrog software. This is a stratigraphic chart of the Paleozoic bedrock formations in southern Ontario is used to guide the stratigraphic coding of model layers. Model layers represent individual formations or grouped formations where necessitated by data quality, quantity, or thin formations. The erosional profile of the subcrop edges is represented on the chart, showing frequent occurrence of carbonate capped questus. Of particular importance for groundwater movement are the occurrence of regional paleocarst horizons where carbonate strata were subarily exposed at erosional disconformities in the geologic past. This is a regional view of the new 3D Paleozoic bedrock geological model showing the bedrock formations coded in different colors and the legend for these formations on the side. There's 53 Paleozoic bedrock layers represented on here, plus the Precambrian was stripped off the surficial geology. The next few slides show examples of how the model can be used to visualize the subsurface geology. And this one here is showing regional structures, the Chatham Sag, Michigan Basin, Appalachian Basin, separated by the Algonquin Arch. Uh, displaying the topography in connection with its underlying bedrock geology is a very simple use of the model. This slide just shows a buried apartment or cuesta on the uh, Lurian Age formations of the Bass Islands Formation and Salina Group. This slide shows the surface of the Silurian Guelph Formation showing nickel carbonate buildups on this surface. These are about 100 meters in relief above the regional surface. They form oil and natural gas reservoirs and are now used for natural gas storage. The interpinnacle areas between these structures is a regional paleocarst that forms an important regional brine aquifer. The 3D model is particularly useful for displaying salt dissolution features with associated subsidence and collapse over top of them. In this slide in yellow, uh, seeing B salt beds, uh, the Salina group B salt formation, uh, there's a gap over top of that where I'm not displaying the remaining formations of the Salina group. Green are the overlying Devonian formations. You can clearly see collapse structures and subsidence features over top areas of dissolution of the B salt. Uh, this slide just summarizes some of the revisions to uh, version one of the model. So we've got a uh, bedrock topography surface, improved uh, expression of the Niagara escarpment, uh, outliers, anomalies and gaps have been removed. We've added some layers, we've improved some beta quality quantity for the Lockport group, and we've added some new features. Model construction is heavily dependent on petroleum malformation top picks wells in the Ontario Petroleum Data System and quality assurance and quality control revisions to those formation top picks that were made as part of this project. There's some other supporting uh, borehole information. There's a lot of digital data like subcrop geology and bedrock topography. There's geo-referenced oil and gas reservoir outlines, fault planes, etc. And we utilize sonar survey records for salt caverns. Regional faults are represented as extruded 3D planes at the locations of mapped regional faults in the Chatham Sag. This illustration is on the surface of the Middle Devonian Lucas Formation with all younger formation layers removed. 
This slide just shows the 2D representation of lower Silurian natural gas pools in the model. The formations shallower than the Cabot Head Formation and the Grimsby Formation Sandstone have been stripped off. We've added a 3D representation of underground salt mines in southern Ontario. And this example here is in the Windsor area, showing mining of the F salt and the B salt in the Salina group. And also shown on here in orange are hydrocarbon storage caverns uh, utilizing the B salt. Now to convert from a lithostratigraphic to a hydrostratigraphic model, there are several challenges in making that conversion. First, we need to understand the regional hydrogeological framework. It includes where is the groundwater, hydraulic conductivity, geological controls, flow directions. There is a regional hydrochemical zonation of groundwater by depth, by water type. We want to know where the interfaces between those water types are, the base of the fresh water and the base of the sulfur water. We need to assign the lithostratigraphic units as hydrostratigraphic units. Now, in order to build a hydrostratigraphic model, we have to understand the geologic features that are relevant to the hydrostratigraphy. And this is just a short list of some of those features here. Development of a hydrostratigraphic model is supported by a variety of data. There's the water well database of the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks. There's 160,000 wells that penetrate bedrock. The petroleum well database is, again, a principal source of data, just as it is in the lithostratigraphic model. We compiled published hydraulic conductivity estimates, field observations, and drill core are a very important part of this process and chemical and isotopic analyses, for example, from uh, SCUS and SCUS et al. This is a visual representation of the previous slide displayed on a scale geological cross-section of southern Ontario. Shown in blue are the shallow freshwater and yellow, the intermediate depth sulfur water regime, and in orange, the deep seasonal brines. Water movement is down dip along Peleocarst horizons, the shallow to intermediate regime, up dip along the same horizons in the deep brines. Now, this map is an illustration of a raster map GIS analysis of the deepest fresh water interval encountered in water wells relative to the top of bedrock. This is based on 130,000 water wells that penetrate bedrock. So this raster map is used as input into the 3D hydrostratigraphic model. So the approximate depth of that interface, at least between the freshwater and the intermediate sulfur water regime. This map uh, traces the down dip transition from freshwater and subcrop to saline sulfur water at intermediate depths to deep brine. And that occurs at 20, 25 kilometers down dip from the subcrop. You can see the Lochbus group uh, crop is shown in green on here. And the values shown on here are total dissolved solids in the Lockport group petroleum well water analyses. Fifteen hydrostratigraphic units have been identified as illustrated on this chart. HSU names are listed in the left column. Erosional profile of the bedrock formations is shown along the right. Seven of the hydrostratigraphic units are classified aquifers. The remainder are aquitards or aquacludes. Colors for the aquifers are as in the previous slides. Fresh water occurs in three shallow water aquifer systems. One in the official sediments, HSU2, in a contact aquifer at the sediment bedrock interface. HSU3, shallow karst developed at the subcrop edges, carbonate formations. Intermediate to deep subsurface aquifers of brackish to saline sulfur water or brine Ur and paleocarst horizons developed at disconformities at the upper surface of carbonate bedrock formations. They were exposed to subaerial weathering in the geologic past. This chart just summarizes the 15 uh, unified hydrostratigraphic units. Their color coding on here is by water type. Uh, again, blue is fresh water, yellow is sulfur water, the orange is uh, brine. Each one of these is summarized the lithology and the published hydraulic conductivity data. I won't go through this in any more detail in this presentation. Now, these next seven slides are examples of progress we made on building a 3D hydrostratigraphic model. So this first one is a regional section showing in subsurface groundwater aquifers in the bedrock, and water types are coded uh, to the legend here. Blue is fresh, yellow is sulfur, and orange is brine. 
and the gray colors are aquitards. These next four slides show the principal water aquifers in the bedrock. One of them shows the gradation from salt water brine through sulfur water to water going from the deepest parts of the surface to subcrop. This first one is the Lucas Dundee aquifer. This slide shows the Bass Islands Bertie aquifer going from about 350 meters to depth to subcrop. This is the Guelph Aquifer. You're seeing variation from 850 meters to subcrop, and again, that same uh, high chemical zonation from uh, deep to shallow. This is the deepest of those bedrock groundwater aquifers, the Cambrian. It's entirely brine. There is no subcrop exposure of the Cambrian in southwestern Ontario. This slide is just a 3D view of the actual uh, points. 3D space, uh, again coated by water type. Uh, see again, clearly see this uh, depth, we go depth zonation from mines to intermediate uh, sulfur water to fresh water near the surface. And if any of you are still interested in oil and gas, we've added on this map for the Cambrian, the 3D distribution of oil and gas show records uh, in pink uh, gas and green oil. So just to summarize, we've uh, raised a 3D geologic model of southern Ontario, and that uh, will be released uh, shortly as GSC Open File 8795. There's new features in that model that weren't in their previous model, and working progress on development of a 3D hydrostratigraphic model. Thank you very much for uh, this presentation. <laughs>